In today's video, we're taking a look at the very, very active tropics. It's like a light switch has been turned on out there, and now we can see four potential disturbances out there in the Atlantic. Absolutely wild stuff. We're going to go over those percentages for each of these, and then we're going to be diving into the upcoming storminess, total precipitation, and that big changing temperature pattern that's going to see us into a very, very intense heat wave. Before we get into things, be sure to check out Prestige Weather, again, in the description and pinned comment down below. As always, it's only $5 a month. We do early access to all of our seasonal and monthly forecasts. We do weekly consulting calls, and we also have other consulting services within there. Again, it's going to be in the pinned comment and description down below. Let's get straight into things, and as you can see, again, four disturbances. We're just going to work our way from west to east, so let's start with this Gulf system. We do have a 0% chance of development next uh, 48 hours, but through the next seven days, so the five days beyond those 48 hours, we see a 40% chance of development. So this one has also increased quite a bit, about 10% per day. And now we're nearing 50-50 chance of development. So certainly something to watch here in the Gulf of Mexico, which happens to be extremely ripe for development. As we work our way further eastward here, we can see a 30% chance of tropical formation over the next seven days here. Only a 10% chance over the next 48 hours though. So we are gonna see a better chance later rather than sooner. This is a new system, by the way, here for the Southern Caribbean. I could see the case for if it moves further north in that cone, this one to be one that can really, really develop. If this hangs out very close to South America though, we will see a decreased chance of development with this one. So there is a lot of differences in, in where this one goes. If it goes through the middle, it's 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 less than if it goes north, but more than if it goes south. You get the point. Let's go for further and further eastward. This one here, we have a 40% over the next 48 and over the next seven days. Uh, so this one is basically just a 40% chance of development straight up and likely that best chance is, is, is nearing soon. As we take a look here at our highest chance, code red here, also our furthest east system, we see a 70% chance of development over the next seven days, so more chances than not, and a 60% chance over the next 48 hours, so there's actually more chance of this storm developing than it not even over just the next two days. Certainly, very, very interesting. Let's move in. I know that was a lot. Let's move into the upcoming pattern here. As you can see with this storminess for later on today, we do see uh, this system up here about a thousand uh, millibar there. And we do see this kind of cold front extending southward from it, a bit of a warm front here. Uh, definitely bringing in some cooler, nicer temperatures, about 85 for most areas tomorrow. Gonna be very pleasant with this cooler burst of air. It's not gonna last very long. We also have a major tropical system here approaching Southern California where we're gonna see potentially historic flooding. So we need to watch this very, very closely. By the time we reach Saturday, we can see it is nearing the kind of Mexican coast here. I forget what this area is called. Um, we'll call it the Panhandle of Mexico. How about that? Anyway, as you can see, we also have plenty of kind of just thunderstorms hanging out there near the Caribbean. We also see this 1005 now weakening uh, sharply. We do see a 996 here for Canada, could bring some pretty intense storms up there. So multiple things going on for the day on Saturday. By the time we reach Sunday, the 20th here, we can see this system is dramatically weakening as it approaches Southern California. This is very, very typical, obviously very desertous area in these parts. So makes sense that it would weaken. But that doesn't really stop the heavy precipitation from bringing uh, severe impacts potentially as we see this precipitation field is stretching all the way through Southern California, a lot of Arizona, Nevada, and Utah there. Very, very intriguing. Let's keep this going. Let's move this towards Monday the 21st here and we can see this heavy precipitation continuing here for California, Nevada, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana now by this point. So this is really, really ramping up and continuing on for these areas. By Tuesday, the 22nd here, we can see this potential tropical system beginning now for the Gulf of Mexico. Doesn't look too intense, but it does bring plenty of precipitation here to Texas and Louisiana. And we can still see some isolated activity throughout a lot of the West as a result of that tropical system that just came through. Let's keep this going. Let's go towards Wednesday, the 23rd here. 
and we could see that we see this system over mostly southern Texas. We see another tropical system there over Haiti, uh, and we could see plenty of thunderstorms still ongoing here for the four corner states, the northern Rockies as well. Definitely a very, very interesting system here. Thursday on the 24th, we could see a lot of thunderstorm activity for a lot of the northern parts of both the central and eastern states. So certainly something that we're going to be watching. A lot of thunderstorm activity here for New Mexico and Texas as well uh, as a result, again, of that tropical system. For Friday, we finally see that one dying down. We do see another tropical system approaching the Bahamas. Looks pretty intense. We do see a lot of thunderstorm activity around for the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, also for the Northern Plains and Upper Midwest, as well as Great Lakes. So we're going to be watching all of these areas. Saturday, the 26th here, we continue to see this thunderstorm activity ramping through for the North Central and the Northeastern states there. Definitely very, very intriguing and leading me to believe some above average activity might be on the way in the long range. And then finally, by Sunday the 27th here, we could see that this continues on for these very northern parts. We do see a 982 millibar tropical storm at this point over the kind of, I guess you'd call it the eastern Bahamas there, the eastern Caribbean. That is where we're seeing this take place. So certainly a very intense tropical system taking place. But we'll have to wait and see what happens with it. That's again August 27th. The total precipitation tells the full story. Our driest area is going to be this pocket here for a lot of the south central and a lot of the deeper south and southeast, as you can see, also getting involved in some of these drier conditions. Uh, we do see that where that tropical system goes in the west. We can see that this brings above average activity, so it's going to spread all the way up into the northern Rockies. We do see a lot of storms still moving across this area here, and that's bringing a lot of activity to the north. And then we see a lot of tropical activity moving its way through the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean, but all of it is moving around this drier pocket. Anywhere in the whites, we're expecting practically no precipitation. Your grays are going to be about a tenth of an inch or less. Greens are a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Blues are half an inch to an inch. Your yellows are an inch to two inches. Reds are two to five inches. And then your browns are five to ten inches of precipitation. Let's dive straight into the temperature pattern here, and we can see these cooler temperatures that are on their way, and they move through pretty intense, actually. This is when we're going to be at about, you know, 80, 85 for most of these areas, so below normal temperatures overall. We see the surging warmth here out west for the central states. What we're going to see begin to happen with this tropical system, though, is a negative PNA here. Now, what this does is it encourages warmth to surge both for the central and eastern states, and we begin to see this happening. There is a little bit of a pushback from this cooler air down the east, so we do see some conflict in here. This could be part of the reason why we're seeing all that activity around this area through the model run. As we just continue it on, we continue to see the warmth in the east, but we do see some points like this one here in particular around the 30th, where most of the warmth, I would argue, is in this pocket. And we see a lot of cool air trying to move down the eastern states. And this is really reminiscent of the June that we had. So I'm watching for potentially a pattern just like that one to take place. And we see this kind of last all the way through the end of the model run here on September 2nd. We do see some negative temperatures here some cooler temperatures moving down the east coast uh, and warmth overall in between. Anyway, be sure to subscribe. We upload videos just like this one every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.